Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And aloha. Welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm the host, Calvin Griffin. And thanks for joining us on another program here. Uh, for those of you who've seen the program before, you know we talk about what's happening here in the uh, state of Hawaii about um, the uh, military and veterans community and uh, you know, try to enlighten you. And we're also looking for a response also to some of the things that may be out there that we may not be aware of. And as I mentioned, besides this program, there are other programs that are hosted by this uh, station that uh, deal with veterans and military issues. A lot of good hosts that uh, tackle these things. Uh, here in Hawaii, we have a very diverse community, um, and, but a lot of people are not aware of the African-American presence. I mean, we're here and you see us around and all that, uh, but uh, mainly through the military. But there is a large um, and um, very dynamic history uh, about the presence of African-Americans here in the state of Hawaii. Of course, this month being African-American History Month, um, you know, people are bringing into the forefront a lot of things that happened uh, concerning the culture, but there's a lot of things that uh, people are not aware of, not only about the presence here in Hawaii, but also around the country and also expansion around the world. Today I have my guest, Mr. Richard Brunskill, who's a film maker. Uh, he's done extensive um, research within the, about the African American and African um, cultures, and is here to share uh, some of the views with us. Richard, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. <coughs> Reason, uh, just to get started, a lot of people, you've been here for quite some time. So a little bit about yourself so people will be familiar with who and what you are and get the like and love you like some of the others do. Yeah, right, okay. okay. <laughs> um, I came here in 98, uh, been here pretty much the whole time. Um, did a stint on the mainland for a little while, about three and a half years, then mm -hmm. had to come back to Hawaii. Um, I've worked for um, PBS here, I've worked for Olelo, um, I've done, you know, a number of TV shows, I've done TV production since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I created the first, literally the first African American commercial TV show here called Nubian Hawaii News, mm -hmm. and that was in 2007. Yeah. So um, I've been here a while, I've, I've seen a few things. Mm -hmm. I know you interact with a lot of uh, people out there in the community. And again, like I say, again, I know that some of your focus is with, of course, the African-American experience. But some with the military, what are some of the things that um, you've been enlightened to? I mean, I've learned a lot since I've been over here about some of the past, you know, here in the history, uh, history in Hawaii. But what are some of the things that you may have been, you know, that you're aware of that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I mean, the, the, the African-American veteran has been coming through here for years. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's not anything new. In fact, it's kind of funny because usually when people see an African-American, the first thing they ask them is, are you a veteran? Mm. Um, so that's just an indication of, an indicator as to how many black folks actually come through here on mm. a regular basis. Mm. Um, there's so much, and I want to say hidden knowledge mm. um, about African Americans here, the um, one of the one of the crucial things that is veterans related mm. was uh, over at Pearl Harbor, Port Lock, Port Lock, yep. when they had that explosion. <clears throat> People don't know that they had a similar explosion on the mainland that dealt with African Americans who were loading and un uh, unloading ammunition mm -hmm. because that was the dirty work. Yeah. Nobody else wanted to do it. They didn't want to sacrifice any of their men. Mm -hmm. And consequently, you know, you have these major explosions because nobody really cared, mm -hmm. you know, what would happen. It's like, oh, you guys just do your job, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, consequently, they would have these, these two major explosions. So there's a lot of details in terms of black history, African-American history, that people will never know. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that's what made the one thing that I see the problem with so-called history months, okay, we got black history, Latino history, women history, the whole nine yards, you know. It's like, okay, we're gonna give you guys a month, a day, whatever it is, like say, to acknowledge your contribution, all right, mm. just this period of time. T 
to me, I have a major heartburn with that because I don't think there should be a Black History Week, uh, the whole nine yards, and well, what does he mean by that? Mm. What I'm saying is that it should be inclusive in the history curriculum year round, you know, with not only celebrating, like I said, the African American experience, but all the other experiences also that people need to be made aware of. Because what I notice is when they have, for the course, with Black History Month, you got these different events, and the only thing you do, you have people of the African American, you know, related uh, community, they're the ones that show up. So it doesn't seem that there is the information is getting out there, or sometime, you know, people's eyes glaze over because you're talking about African American history. It's like, oh my God, here we go, Malcolm, uh, you know, the marches, the sil the slavery, and everything else. You know, so we heard it before, done there, got the T-shirt, the whole nine yards. Uh, you're not telling T-shirts, are you? As a matter of no, yeah, okay. I just want to be sure about this. Okay, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> no T-shirts today. That's you know my take on as far as like so with the Black History thing. But yeah. I know that um, again right now just focus with um, here in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, the history. We had the people didn't know that uh, a lot of people were aware of that the Buffalo Soldiers were here. Mm. They helped to build roads on the main, on the Big Island, I believe, like say oh, up yeah. in Mauna Kea, you know, yeah. and also here on Oahu. There was a section that was set, all, uh, set aside for black service members down by the, uh, currently it's like Walkenburg and where the Trinity Church is located. You know? well, it wasn't actually a set aside, it was more yeah. like discrimination. They, they didn't want to make, they wanted to make sure that they kept the African Americans, so the black soldiers separated from the white soldiers. Mm -hmm. That's not like, you know, they were giving some, some, you know, equal and fair thing. It was, we want those black people over there and we don't want them associating with the white people. That's the bottom line, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of African American history, it's almost like, okay, why do you need African American history? Because you're not included in any of the American history. You're not included in world history. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're not included, then you would, it would behoove you to create your own. That's why, that's why I mean, nobody complains when, when, when people who, who practice a religion of Hebrew talk about their heritage. Mm. Nobody complains. Uh, nobody complains when Italian Americans have their, their parades and all that stuff. But all of a sudden, people become soft and gushy and nasty and, and ugly when Africans and their descendants talk about their history. Mm. So not only it was those, those months, days, celebrations weren't created out of the benevolence of the greater society, mm -hmm. they were created because we weren't included. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna sit there and as, as a person and, and allow somebody to denigrate you, especially for all that Africans and their descendants have done for human civilization, then we need a whole year of African-related history. Okay. That's just my take on it. <laughs> okay. I hear the passion in your voice. No, 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 you haven't heard my passion. <laughs> Let me get a grip. Okay. Anyhow, um, yeah, I see where, <laughs> where, you're, <laughs> where you're coming from with this. But a lot of people say, okay, now what we're going to talk about in a few minutes is about um, another, uh, something that you're, pres you're presenting to the community as far as mm. <clears throat> enlightening people to the African experience and the African American Keep saying that anyhow, but let's say black, just get it over with anyhow. Yeah, okay. let's, let's let's put it put it where it's supposed to be. Okay, black history. Yeah, okay, don't say you, we'll try to be correct, but not too politically correct on this. Okay, the thing is, <laughs> as far as with the uh, histories and things of that nature, is again, a lot of people get frustrated because they see here in this country, uh, again, a lot of people may not be aware of. Uh, we hear about certain things, mm -hmm. but to in depth, because a lot of people will say, okay, with the different cultures, you have the different Asian cultures, uh, people come here from different parts of the world and everything else. They come here and they, um, they get their communities together and they expand economically and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, how come the African Americans or the blacks haven't done it uh, to this point, you know, to any degree? A lot of people are not aware of a section called Black Wall Street, which is in the mm -hmm. Tulsa, Oklahoma, which they talk about 9-11, which not to take away from 9-11 and the horrors of what happened that day. Mm -hmm. But when they say that it was one of the worst incidents that happened in the history of this country as far as terrorism, it was the first time in the history of the world, from what I understand, as far as aerial bombings, where you had a section of 39 square blocks mm -hmm. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
hospitals, schools, the whole nine yards, very vibrant communities. And then, of course, an incident happened. Uh, normally it's like, okay, uh, some kind of transgression in the battle from a black man against someone else, and normally it's a female, all right? And that's when it, the thing sparked. And during that period of time, like I said, I don't even think the full account has been, um, this hasn't been a full accounting, where someone say, some people say it was hundreds, possibly thousands of African Americans, like I say, that were killed during that particular day. That is not one, like I say, the only incident. They had Rosewood, you had mm -hmm. a number of different things. Yeah. The thing is, not to really harp on all the, you know, what we say, the negative things, because there's been some very positive things within, you know, that um, around the country that uh, blacks have instituted in their different communities. You don't hear about a lot of the grassroots operations where people mm -hmm. are self-sufficient, where they're able to go do certain things, like say to interact with other cultures, you know. Mm -hmm. And the thing is with the media, they all say, of course, if it, le if it bleeds, it leads, and yeah. all of a sudden, like yeah. say, the, what they try to do as far as uh, trying to make us think we are different than one another, you know. And when you have that, I mean, when you disrespect a uh, culture, mm -hmm. all right, then that's when a lot of the, uh, what seems the animosity or the uh, so-called what is perceived as hostility and actuality, it's not being hostile. What you're doing is you're asserting your cultural presence, you mm -hmm. know. And I think a lot of people misconstrued, like say that, you know, when you do hear somebody that's forceful, when they talk about how they feel, that the way that you come across, I've heard you speak in the past, your presentations, you know, and a lot of people may say, okay, well, you know, it's Afrocentric. No, it's not, you know. No, Again, it's being, it's setting it up where, like, say, I mean, I, you asked me to respect your culture, I would like you to respect mine, because I think that any culture that is disrespected or, ta or disintegrated or, you know, taken down, Denigrated, yeah. we all lose, no matter what the culture is, you know. But again, you know, like, say, it's still that uh, feeling, you know, and, um, you know, you can't always dwell on the past, you know, but again, there's certain systemic problems that have, I still, you know, have a manifestation that, like, say, in current, you know, um, the current situation anyhow. Mm. And I think, like, say, well, what you're trying to do as far as present the history, because if you don't know, we, we a lot of blacks, if you don't know where you, you came from, you don't know where you're going as a people, you know, yeah. as a culture, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, but, yes. The, the, okay. the, the, the thing is, a lot of, what would be perceived as acts? Okay. Oh, sir. what would be what? Somebody calling in? In the clear. Uh, too, I think we're going to take a short break. Um, okay. That's coming up pretty soon. Okay. Anyhow. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and take that break, and we'll come back in a few minutes. Cool. Aloha. I'm Winston Welch, and every other Monday at 3 p.m., you can join me at Out and About a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. So please join us every other Monday at 3, and we'll see you then. Aloha. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guest are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Okay, you're back with uh, Hawaii Uniform. And again, my special guest today is Mr. Richard Brunskill, who's a filmmaker. And we're going to continue our conversation uh, before I went on my little rant there. Uh, <clears throat> I know that, um, again, what you're trying to do to enlighten, you know, not only African blacks, but also other cultures, and like say, you interact, and I know you work with other um, different uh, people who are in the genre as far as films mm -hmm. and things of that nature who try to get their message out there, you know, and enlighten people also. But the current project that you're working on right now is uh, you're promoting a there's a series that came out, Hidden Colors. Right. Okay. Um, there's a series of four films called Hidden Colors. And what they do is they've documented the history of blacks worldwide, globally. Um, things that you are never going to hear. They're never going to teach them in high school. They're never going to teach them in grammar school. They actually have taken four <laughs> films, these four films, and they're actually looking at them, them to turn them into uh, curriculum for colleges mm -hmm. because they they they're pretty in-depth um, 
So my thing is, uh, as a community service, because I'm definitely not making any money off of this deal, mm -hmm. um, I'm showing these films at the Doris Duke Theater. Mm -hmm. We've already shown two, um, Hidden Colors 1, Hidden Colors 2. Mm -hmm. um, so this Monday coming up, uh, we're showing number three, and then the following Monday, we're showing number four. Mm -hmm. um, you know, half of the people literally half yeah, half of the, the small crowd that we've had come mm -hmm. were not black. Mm -hmm. They were either Asian or uh, Caucasian or, or white or whatever mm -hmm. adjective you want to use. Um, and across <coughs> the board, mm -hmm. people leave that theater saying to them, saying out loud, oh my God, my mind has been blown. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, they cover all aspects mm -hmm. of black history. Africans were the first people to literally circumnavigate the planet. Mm -hmm. And there's evidence all over the planet that that indicates it. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's a there's a catchphrase they use in in the film that says, "The deeper they dig, the blacker the planet gets," mm -hmm. because Africans have been everywhere. You know, long before Columbus, Africans were going to the Americas, mm -hmm. the South Americas. Um, all of Africa is just a wealth of information. Europeans got their culture literally from Africans. Mm -hmm. The Renaissance was not about Europeans being, you know, these 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 great inventors and all that stuff. They were being taught by the Moors. Okay? Now they want to make the Moors white, just like they want to make Hannibal white, just like they want to make Cleopatra white or European. And that's the kind of history that is being revealed. I mean, we all know, you know, everyone should seriously doubt that Cleopatra had lavender eyes like Elizabeth Taylor. I mean, we just kind of know that. We, you know, other things like who actually built the pyramids, yeah. we, we know that they were not Europeans. Right, you know? okay. The first thing, I mean, you might some viewers out there who may be hearing this for the first time, this perspective, and it's like, all right, uh, is this just some more Afrocentric propaganda that doesn't have any basis in fact, or? It's, it's all factual. Okay. This is, this, the, the people who have done these studies, have, have, they, they are scholars. Mm -hmm. They are world travelers. They travel to these places. They meet with um, other people of authority who say, yes, this is what we know, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they have, they, they're debunking um, um, myths about, you know, just different things all having to do with black people that Europeans have claimed. These people, they, you know, these, they're not like people who are jokes. These people are scholars. They are learned. Okay. When you mentioned, like, say, going back and digging, like, say, the deeper you go, the darker the, the, the history gets, mm -hmm. you know? To put things in context, it's like at some, at some point, it's been, I guess, commonly agreed to in the scientific world, like say that uh, a lot of the um, life of <laughs> human beings as we know it mm -hmm. uh, started in Africa and mm -hmm. then they spread out, mm -hmm. you know? So I know that we're, you know, we're talking about the cultural issue and everything else, but at some point in the past, there wasn't that separation between the racial distinctions, was there, or? You know, it, I mean, it's interesting because in the film they talk about back in ancient times, mm -hmm. people actually lived together, yeah. okay? Um, there was no strong delineation between, well, he's white, I'm black, because the, the Europe, a lot of Europe was actually black. They, you know, they just came out with this, this revelation that, uh, that the people in England or Scotland or somewhere over there were actually dark-skinned people. Everyone knew, every, I mean, everyone knew that. You know, there, there are things in the film that discuss the fact that um, there are pubs in that part of the world that actually talk about, you know, I think they're called the black boy pubs. Mm -hmm. That's because blacks were all through England. They were all through Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so people live together. And, and one of the points that they make in the film is that there were no such things as world wars. Mm -hmm. There were skirmishes, maybe, maybe one country was in, but, but a world war, that's a new phenomena that has happened on this planet with the onset of Europeans kind of 
venturing forth, you okay. know. So I got to a certain point where we're getting back, and one thing I truly believe <clears throat> is that we're all part of the same, wherever we come from, whoever you look like, no matter how far back you go, we're all part of the same, uh, we have the same origin. Yeah, right? we have the same roots, all yeah. Right. We diversified. With what you're, um, the series and a lot of the things like you're also promoting, again, it's not from a, I wouldn't say, uh, what you call it? A adversarial point of view is from the point of again trying to acknowledge or trying to enlighten people. I you mean, know, pe people, people <coughs> like to make derogatory associations with certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they'll tell you, well, that's kind of Afrocentric. Mm -hmm. No, it's historic. Mm -hmm. Okay, the fact that it's been left out of history because it may frighten some people, mm -hmm. that doesn't make it negative, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the fact that people don't want to be called Negroes anymore and they, they choose to be called African Americans or black, oh, now they're, 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 they're speaking out too much. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody will always say to you, well, you know, those, those, those people, they're, they're, they're really pushing now, they're really pushing. As the truth had been told to begin with, black folks wouldn't have to stand here and say, yeah, Leonardo da Vinci, where'd you get your information from? Um, um, all of the castles that were built, most of the castles in Europe were not built by Europeans. They were built by the Moors. Mm -hmm. See, the minute, nobody, no, nobody is upset when other cultures assert their, their, their history. Mm -hmm. And what's really amusing is a lot of other cultures got their culture from Africa. Mm -hmm. But the minute black folks make make a statement, it's like, oh, you know, they're 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 being um, they're they're being too brazen. Yeah, but the response you mentioned the response you got from the film, some individuals who are not of African American descent, it was very positive oh, as far as it's yeah. incredible. They literally uh, there was there was a couple that was there from um, New York, Long Island, where, mm -hmm. where I'm from, mm -hmm. and she was white, he was white. <laughs> She came out, of, she got up from her chair and literally walked up to me and said, my mind has been blown. She said, I have never known any of this. And she said, and, 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 and I got to go to the bathroom. I gotta, and she just ran out. And her husband came by. He says, oh, my God. He says, we've never been taught any of this. Yeah. So what has the response been from the uh, so-called uh, status quo, or I don't know if that's a proper term, but... There's certain things, like say, that are incorporated or uh, allowed into the media here in the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What resistance did you get at any point from any type of uh, venue that you know uh, might give you access to the public? That um, I mean, was there a major thing going on, or was it easy to um, to get this you know public form? Um, there, you know, since this is Black History Month and. Um, the museum normally has an entire month that they give the black history for the film for film festival. Mm -hmm. They've since decided, okay, they're going to do a week this month, and then they'll do a week further down the calendar. And I had people actually question me as to, well, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, because these are films that you haven't shown. Mm -hmm. And the first film came out in 2011. The second film came out in 2012, 2014, and 2016. And I'm not saying that the museum or the committee that's involved was negligent. It was their choice not to show them, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I spoke with one of the members and, and she actually knew because she had seen one of them. Yeah. So my thing is um, when, you, when they questioned me like I had done something wrong, mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to let them know. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a lock or, or you know, exclusivity on Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And since I'm doing this on on my dime, mm -hmm. okay, I, I've had to. I, I'm the guy who does not have the money to 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 do this, but I, I just felt like we got to do it now. Yeah. You know, with with President Obama leaving and this current climate, black people need to know as much as they can because you're going to be challenged above and beyond. Okay. Um, again, here in Hawaii with the multiculturalism and things of that nature in here. Uh, what, okay, speak into the camera and tell somebody why they should come and view your presentation, what they possibly could walk away with it, and 
what do you see in the future as far as, you know, what you're trying to contribute to the overall spirit of Aloha here in Hawaii? America, no. The, the bottom line is these films, some people would say are controversial, but they're not controversial, they're just truthful. When you neglect to learn things about black people, you pretty much sacrifice, you know, relationships with them. Um, everybody should come see these films. I don't care what, what your ethnicity is, because they cover so much of world history that you're walking around like with half the story or less. So my thing is, come and see these films. We're on the last two. The, the, like I said, anyone who leaves the, the, the film, they are blown away. So this is more, it's not to be, <coughs> be a, something that's gonna be divisive. It's more or less, again, to open people's eyes and to more or less give that commonality as far as the human experience. Well, I'm not here to really make people no. comfortable. I'm here to let people know that these are the facts. Mm -hmm. if, if these facts scare you, then you should be asking why you never heard them before. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not here to apologize for our history. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to apologize for you not knowing our history. Mm -hmm. Now, people wanna get uptight, that's on you. Mm -hmm. But nobody gets uptight when Jewish people push their history. Mm -hmm. Okay, the minute black folks push our history, then, oh, um, okay. what are they gonna do next? Are they gonna get guns and all that, all that stuff? That has yet to happen in this country, okay. you know. All right, we're down to the wire. Well, first, I want to thank you for coming in and sharing your views and um, enlightening our <laughs> excuse me, it's <laughs> serious thing, <laughs> enlightening our audience to you know this perspective anyhow. But uh, in the last few <laughs> in thirty seconds or less, you have a number you want to give out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, you can call me at um, eight zero eight. Four nine one seven three six eight. Um, you can go see the films. They're coming up. Like I said, this this Monday, this film starts at seven o five. The following Monday, the films the second the fourth film starts at seven o five. Um, there is a fee because, like I said, I, I'm giving this to the community, and I and I'm definitely not going to make any money off of this. Okay. Well, no, no. <laughs> I want to thank you, like I said again. What we're trying to do is be more informative, uh, bring us together, anyhow. Like I said, but. Check it out to find out what's going on, but thank you for your efforts. Thank um, you, sir. I know you've been a very valuable member of the community. And um, to our viewers, thank you. God bless. And until that time. <laughs>